So NBA Twitter had another one of these, where no matter what you end up picking, someone's going to get mad. So, apologies ahead of time. Start, bench, cut, Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker. So, if I was going to go off of this season we just had, I would probably start Simmons, bench Tatum, and cut Devin Booker. Because, uh, well, we might as well start with Booker, because I know... Suns fans especially will be like, wait a minute, what? You know, 28 points a game, very good efficiency, playmaking was very good, better than Tatum. Not as good as Simmons, but in the ballpark. Well, to me, when I think of Jason Tatum, I think that what he is now is closer to the guy when the season ended who was averaging 30-something points over two months, month and a half, whatever it was. Realistically, that guy was not going to maintain it. But you figure it it drops down to a 25 points a game type of a player who is beating guys off the dribble and hitting side step three pointers. They weren't really step backs, but you know what I mean. And someone who's still a very good defensive player. I think Tatum is in the running for an all defense forward spot. And when I compare that to Devin Booker, even if Booker is a better playmaker, I feel like Tatum still gets the edge there. But, uh,. There's certainly a conversation, you know, Booker's passing versus Tatum's defense and where all that ends up. The reason I put Ben Simmons over both, and I should say this is not my final answer. I'm thinking of this more of like a projecting forward, but just to explain why I would look at it this way now. The reason I would have Simmons above both of them is because I think with Ben Simmons, I mean, first off, defensively, Simmons is in the 1% of the NBA right now. I think he's definitely all defense first team and I think Simmons has become the premier not everything shows up in the box score guy in the league partially because of the defense but also because with Simmons the versatility I don't think it's as obvious and I don't think Philly has used it as well with him setting screens on and off the ball and that sort of thing but to me that's a that's a real weapon in his game and uh Well, maybe they'll end up maximizing it in the bubble. And it should also be said that his efficiency has remained great. Um, It's better than Tatum's and Booker's. Now, of course, the obvious reply to that is, well, the shooting. I get it. I still have fears about Simmons' effectiveness in fourth quarters and against a good defense or whatever. But to me, when we look at the previous playoffs where that happened, a lot of that to me was because they just took the ball out of his hands and they just gave it to Jimmy Butler, which... I mean, they viewed as a necessity because they figured, well, we can at least get more out of Jimmy Isos than we can trying to figure out with Ben right now. But uh, I I still look at that as more of a him not being used right as opposed to him not being good, I guess. And uh, I feel like Simmons has kind of been forced into being the most underrated player in the NBA because so many people talk about him as if he sucks or whatever. It's like, no, this guy's one of the probably 20 best players in the NBA or so. Another reason why I say all this is because I think if Simmons just had a team that was specifically only built around him and there was like a shooting center or whatever, not that I'm suggesting they should trade Embiid, I've always been on that train, keep these two together, but I do think Simmons could get up to like 22, 23 points a game, and at that point this is not a conversation if you ask me, it's Simmons clearly number one among these three guys. Um, But that hasn't happened, so I can't just give him that completely, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's how I evaluate them for this season. If I go moving forward and I look at the potential of Devin Booker improving defensively, Tatum improving as a playmaker, Ben Simmons maybe improving as a three-point shooter, free-throw shooter, um, perhaps the 76ers roster being shuffled around a little bit, Um, I feel like then I would probably go start Tatum, bench Simmons, cut Devin Booker still. I know. Suns fans, I'm sorry, okay? I already had the whole spiel about how I'm still not a believer in DeAndre Ayton and he's looked good in the bubble so far. Well, in the game he didn't have foul trouble. And now I'm cutting Devin Booker in this thing, but it's tough, man. That's the whole point of the conversation. We're taking three very exciting young stars, although Devin Booker is not even super young at this point. So I don't think Tatum will ever surpass or even equal Ben Simmons as a defensive player. 
I mean, to me, Simmons can win a couple of Defensive Player of the Year awards and stuff. However, I feel like Tatum still has room to improve there, and he's already very good there. And I feel like the difference between them, when Tatum eventually hits his ceiling defensively, it's still going to be there, but I don't think it's going to be big enough in Simmons' favor to make up for Tatum as a scorer. I mean, to me... Tatum is going to be averaging 27, 28 a game starting probably next year. And uh, the rebounding is still going to be good. The defense is still going to be good. And I do think he can improve as a passer. I mean, his playmaking, it's not great right now. He doesn't really have a nose for seeing the open guy like that. Booker is certainly better. Ben Simmons is definitely better than him in that regard. But I just feel like he can make enough improvements there to where he can get to, I don't know, four assists a game or something. I think part of why I believe this is because um, he's gotten much better at attacking the rim. And I mean, he still takes his fair share of mid-rangers. I don't think that's ever going to be gone for him. But he's better at just kind of putting his head down and taking that extra dribble or two and finishing through contact and stuff, even if he had a really bad game in the bubble game one. Um, and that type of thing just usually leads to being able to get more assists. You know, you just draw more attention. You don't bail the defense out with a pull-up jumper as much. And when I take it back to Devin Booker, I mean, you know, lately I've softened up on how good you really need to be defensively from for me to think highly of you as a guard. But when we're talking about this specific conversation, and I'm, I'm comparing Devin Booker to a Defensive Player of the Year candidate, for the next 10 years and an all defense candidate for the next 10 years or whatever then I gotta start being a little bit more of a stickler when it comes to defense you know what I mean um, and I just don't know if Booker's ever gonna improve enough at that along with I'm assuming Tatum and Simmons are gonna keep improving at some of their things again with Simmons it's more so just being used correctly and with Tatum it's we're just gonna see the last chunk of this regular season before it ended but then came back um for like his whole career now now there's a chance that booker can get even better offensively it's just in some ways he's kind of a finished product i mean he averages i mean i don't have the stats in front of me but it's 28 29 a game seven assists he's got like a 58 percent true shooting he can pull up he can play on and off the ball um, I, is he going to average 35 a game? Like, is he going to go James Harden levels of scoring? I don't know. So yeah, again, apologies to Suns fans. And I guess apologies to Sixers fans. And maybe Celtics fans, because they might have managed to get upset, even if I went with Start Tatum. So yeah, that's it.